So I will move on now to introduce our wonderful speaker today. So it is a great pleasure to introduce Hei Yang Ki today. Uh, and uh, before going to the physics part, let me tell a little bit of background. So Hei uh, uh, defended her PhD in 1996 in, in Seoul National University. Afterwards, she was a postdoctoral fellow jointly be between Rutgers University and Bell Labs. Uh, she then moved to the University of California in Los Angeles to another postdoctoral position. And then since 2001, uh, she has been professor at the Department of Physics in the University of Toronto uh, in 2001, starting as assistant professor. She was promoted in 2006 to associate professor. And she is 2000, since 2011, she is a full professor at the Department of Physics. Uh, she has been awarded with many, many honors, but let me just highlight two of them. So she's currently a senior fellow in the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research, CIFAR. And since 2018, she's also a fellow of the American Physical Society. Uh, on, on the physics side, she has been working in the most uh, groundbreaking directions in condensed matter physics that include high temperature superconductivity, uh, pneumatic states, and isotropic or inhomogeneous quantum materials, unconventional, unconventional superconductivity, quantum magnetism, thermoelectric materials, and all forms of topological phases. Uh, and today she's going to tell us about the latest developments in one of the fields that she has been leading, which is the field of uh, quantum spin liquids driven by strong spin orbit coupling. And in particular, th the title of her talk is Kitev Materials and Perspective. So with this, Hey Yang, thanks a lot for uh, accepting this invitation. It's a great pleasure to have you here. The floor is yours and we look forward to your talk. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, good. So I'm going to share my screen and see how uh, it goes. Yeah, good. Uh, so let me begin. Uh, so I think I just shifted myself. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, thank you for invitation. It's uh, my great pleasure to give a talk on the Kitai materials and uh, perspective. Um, given the time is 45 minutes, uh, I thought that uh, I'll begin with my you know, collaborators that uh, uh, in fact uh, make this work to be, uh, be uh, available. Um, so I have a huge collaboration over the six and seven years. So, uh, of the time and uh, mainly my um, current and formal uh, student and postdocs uh, has been the main drivers of the um, work that I have been doing. And I had a wonderful other collaborator outside the uh, University of Toronto uh, that uh, include the, uh, my uh, McMaster uh, University Professor Eric Sorens. And he's the one that uh, the work that I'm gonna talk about today is the one he has done the major jobs. And I have other people at UBC and Toronto and Cologne and Germany and uh, Japan in Okinawa. Uh, I also had a, you know, excellent experimentalist, uh, YZ Kim at uh, Toronto and Ken Butts at the Boston uh, and other places. Uh, so just wanna thank uh, to all of my collaborators that has been uh, doing this work along with me. Okay, so I'll begin with a little bit of outline and uh, please do stop me if you have any questions. Uh, I'll be happy to answer um, along the way. Um, so I'll begin with, uh, I just asked a host and is the, uh, what's the background of the audience and it'll be nice to have a small introduction about the quantum spin liquid. So I add a little brief uh, uh, introduction about the, what you mean by the quantum spin liquid. And then I'll move to the uh, Git type spin liquid and a particular uh, candidate uh, is the ruthenium, alpha ruthenium trichloride. So I'll discuss a little bit about it. And then major of the time, most of my time, I will be talking about how do we understand this uh, so-called Git type interactions, which is this bond dependent um, uh, interaction terms. So to go try to uh, elaborate what is the microscopic mechanism behind such uh, bond dependent interactions. And uh, if we have a solid state materials, of course, we have other terms that generate through this uh, exchange uh, process. And what are the other terms and how we do understand uh, what is the uh, basis behind uh, such uh, bond dependent interactions. So there are more than one dependent interaction outside the Kitaev. And if time permit, I'll talk about higher spin models, like uh, once you have a spin one and spin three half effectively, then uh, how such a physics can be linked to, to the sum of the conventional magnetic orders. So that's the outline and I'll summarize uh, my talk. 
Okay, so let me begin with the quantum spin ligand. Uh, often we just say that quantum spin ligand is the quantum disordered state, um, but uh, in strictly speaking, um, it has to have uh, other features and one of the two which are not independent each other is that the, it should have the fractionalized excitations which are different from the ingredient. For example, we begin with a spin half, but the excitations are not carrying on spin half uh, or spin one excitations uh, different from Meganon excitations. Um, it'll have something like Marana fermions and so on. And that will uh, actually uh, based on the so-called long range entanglement. So I'll go through a couple of them uh, just to show you how one can think about this. So uh, the one of the example, uh, actually a simple example that one can think about is the antiferromagnetic Heisenberg model. So we have this uh, simple Heisenberg model and think about both side problem. I have just one, two, three, four side and they are periodically uh, uh, coupled. And, uh, uh, and then ask uh, ourselves, what is the ground state of this simple foresight Heisenberg model? And actually, if you introduce a singlet, which contains this bond IJ is a site, so it can be one, two here, IJ here, bond singlet, and I denote as this uh, blue colors. And then what we do is that one can introduce the bond operator. So instead of writing the SI as J, uh, one can rewrite this interaction into half of this uh, uh, minus two SI dot SJ and introduce this uh, QIJ, that's the uh, bond operator. Um, so rewrite the Hamiltonian SI dot SJ in terms of this QIJ operator. Then one can notice that the, in fact, that the QIJ acting on that uh, bond of IJ uh, leads to the IJ. So this IJ bond singlet is an eigenstate of QIJ. On the other hand, if QIJK acting on a two different bond where the IJ is making a singlet and KL is making a singlet, QJK will actually change the singlet bond. So simple examples like this, you can see that uh, if I apply the Q23, so this is going to be uh, this particular operator acting on this particular range of bond singlets. So I have two of the singlet making one, two singlet three, four singlets applying on the Q23 uh, on that state, in fact, generate the partner change of the bone singlet. So instead of making a one, two, three, four as a partner in the beginning, applying a Q23 will generate the two, three become a singlet partners and one, four become a partner singlets. So these are bond operators, in fact, resonate, allow to resonate them between the two um, different um, single act combinations. And these are called uh, rumor diagrams, by the way. So using that, one can show that the ground state of this fourth site is in fact the linear combination of the two different types of the mon single act. So I can have this one, two single act with three, four making a pair uh, with combined uh, com combination position of the one, four, uh, pair and two, three pairs. And these are called uh, resonant balance bond. So this is, and the energy of this is in fact the minus two J. So uh, that was, uh, uh, in fact, it's a false sight. So thermodynamic limit is a completely different story. And the first person who has uh, asked like, okay, uh, can you get this uh, RVV, which is this uh, resonant balance bond uh, uh, singlet uh, behavior uh, in two-dimensional system. So that was uh, kind of beginning of the um, uh, quantum spin liquid in higher dimensions. Uh, but you can see that once I put this in the 2D scale lattice, uh, of course, then we will often get the um, magnetic ordering appears. So this RBB state uh, has uh, compete has to compete with the magnetic ordering appearing through the Heisenberg interactions. And often that has not been that simple. So uh, in the past, what people have been thinking that maybe uh, if one used the geometrical frustrations to avoid the magnetic ordering, then one may realize the uh, RBB state, which is the example of the quantum spin linkage. So, uh, so, but so when, when the one thing that, in fact, that the Phil Anderson that when proposed the RBB state, he was using a triangle lattice. Uh, I just elaborate with a small scale uh, just to give you the, some simple ideas, but his original proposal was related to triangle lattice. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see that once I put the Heisenberg interactions, uh, they wanted the anti-parallel, align anti-parallel. 
but then there is a third site, which is not to know what to do. So it's a frustrating. So it was a geometrical frustration that has been used to realize the quantum spin ligand. And that include the Gagome lattice uh, tetrahedron and all of those uh, which can see that uh, there's a frustration between the uh, making a bond happy. And uh, so there are many examples. So this frustrated magnets, uh, no magnetism insulators, uh, they come with many shapes and own characters. Uh, something like a Gagome antiferromagnet is still um, debate, under debate, what is the actual ground state and so on. Um, then, and then since then, um, people have been starting looking for a quantum spin ligand because uh, often we see a magnetic order. Uh, is there a way that we can get the uh, other type of the uh, quantum spin ligand. And here is the one of the uh, fascinating work that done by the Alex Gitaev in 2006. Um, he has suggested that these are exactly solvable model actually. So instead of having a Heisenberg interaction, now you have a honeycomb lattice. So if I look at this site here, uh, honeycomb is not frustrated because it's bipartite lattice. I can put up, down, up, down, up, down, and it's all satisfied. Um, so if I have a Heisenberg model, of course, I'll just have antiferromagnet here. But interaction that is uh, um, written that um, he wrote is in fact uh, written something like this, K with the spin-spin uh, interaction. But the spin-spin interaction depends on the bond gamma. So gamma is X, Y, Z. Um, and then it'll have a Z bond here. So the red is Z bond and blue is X bond and here's a Y bond. So Z bond here is going to have SZ and SZ interaction, which is an Ising interaction. And then X bond will have SX, SX interaction. So that's another Ising interaction, but it's a quantization axis to be along the X direction. And then Y will have uh, SY, SY, another Ising interaction. So this site here is not the bond are frustrated. Now, because of this bond dependent interactions, the site spin is frustrated. They don't know what to do. Um, thus, uh, there is no magnetic order at the zero temperature, the ground state. And this problem is actually exactly solvable as shown by the Gitaev. And that's what we call that since the Gitaev spin ligand. And uh, ground state is so-called G2 spin ligand ground state. And again, uh, I'll try to bring you back. Uh, recall that the uh, quantum spin ligand should have some fractionalized excitations based on the long range entanglement. So not just the disorder state, um, it has to have some kind of different excitations from their own spin half. So here's a spin is by the way spin half because uh, once you have uh, not a spin half, it's no longer an exactly solvable model by the way. If I have a time, I'll go through a little bit about that. Uh, any case, uh, we'll stick with the spin half um, and uh, how he has done it is that uh, rewrite this uh, S operators, uh, spin operator in terms of uh, um, Majorana, two Majoranas here, C and B. So both the Majorana fermions. Uh, B actually has, uh, in fact, it's a four Majoranas because uh, uh, B carries the X here, gamma here. So uh, gamma is X, Y, Z. So if it's SX, then there is a BX times the C and so on. That's uh, how one can introduce uh, the uh, spin operator and then plug in and one can solve it. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna go through the some of the details about the how to solve the key type interactions. Uh, instead, I'll be focusing on how one can get such an interaction from a microscopic uh, spin orbital and spin orbit coupling. Um, so before I do that, I just wanna emphasize that uh, what do you mean by those uh, fractionalized particles? Have you seen it? Uh, of course, we've seen it. Uh, we have a confirmed case, which is the 2D electron gets under the strong magnetic field. So that's just the fractional quantum only effect. And there the excitation is, uh, if I have one third state, it is uh, one third of the charge, it's called anions. So Gitaev spin liquid is the, uh, again, another example. So we don't have the uh, solid state examples or solid state confirmed case. But at least mathematically, we know that this is the exactly solvable uh, Hamiltonian with the uh, excitations where this uh, Majoranas appears as an uh, as a, as a excited particles. It's a fractionalized particles. All right, so I just want to uh, show this uh, as a colloquium. So uh, Majorana fermions, and uh, in fact, those Majoranas are going to rewrite in terms of the vortex here. 
Um, and just want to remind you, my runner is a here is an emergent particle because we don't begin with my runners. It just appears as an extension of the ground state of the guitar motor. And it's a particle of its own particle, so it does not carry the charge. It, we, we begin with the spin model, so it does not carry the charge. It does not carry the spin. Uh, so detecting the Maharana has been a, one of the, another question. And uh, uh, just uh, to show you this, uh, uh, C Maharanas here are free, so it's moving around. So here I just rewrite them in terms of yellows. Uh, those are the, this uh, C Maharanas. And uh, B Maharanas here is going to be linked through the, uh, those uh, little green here is a gaze field in some of the gaze field. So, um, those ones, uh, in fact, can be defined on this each of the bond, um, but they are not gaze invariant quantities. So we have to go through the uh, closer paths, and that is going to be these little hexagons. And those hexagons can carry the uh, the number eigenvalues of either plus one and a minus one. So we call that flux. That's sometimes called flux, or sometimes we call G two vortex. G two meaning just has either plus one or a minus one. The ground state is all red here, meaning that every uh, hexagon will carry those uh, uh, flux, uh, which are nothing but, in fact, the product of the six uh, spins around the hexagon. We also call the plaque operator acting on this state will give a press one. Um, so if this is a press one, the ground state is all uh, having a press one. And extensions is referring to those of the hexagons here, the plaque operator generate the uh, sign of those uh, spin operator around hexagon to be a minus one. So these are some um, mathematical uh, language at this point. And I didn't go through the details of this. Uh, as I said, I will probably spend uh, time on the uh, more physical picture of how we can get this in solid state. So it does not have charge and spin, but it carries the entropy. So a way that detect them is uh, uh, going to be a dumber uh, quantity. So it goes back to the original paper by the Gitaev here that the smoking gun signature of um, this type of the spin liquid is that if I apply the um, time reversal symmetry breaking, I didn't call it the magnetic field as it is because uh, Zeman term act uh, slightly much more stronger than the, uh, this term here. So he write down the term that has uh, three spins uh, uh, going around those uh, hexagons. Uh, and uh, this term break the time reversal. Uh, so once you add that term, that the, uh, this become a so-called chiral spin liquid, meaning that the bulk will have a gap, but the edge state will have appear here. So there'll be a marana, which is going either left side or right side, depending on the direction of the field here. So here's HX, HYZ can be thinking about as the direction of the magnetic field uh, of the uh, component, like uh, H can have X component, Y component, the Z component, and those break the time reversal will allow allowed to have a magnetic field, let's say coming out of it, then there'll be a right hand uh, moving uh, chiral mode. And that will generate the uh, thermal hole conductivity because this is applied along the C axis, for example. Um, and then uh, that will generate the, if you have a gradient of the, temperature will generate the transverse direction of the conductivity appearing due to the Majorana fermion, uh, which carry the entropy. So that generates the finite thermal hole conductivity and uh, it has to be half quantized. So that's the uh, signature of this uh, particular um, git type spin liquid. Okay, so that's a uh, uh, theory part, uh, just background. So let's now begin the <clears throat> part, the real part, the uh, solid state part. So how can we either discover Gitai material or how can you design the Gitai material? So that requires the sum of the um, ingredient or the conditions. So uh, one condition is that uh, we need a honeycomb moat insulator. So it has to be, it's an insulator um, and uh, have a, some honeycomb structure. Of course, that means that strong electron-electron interactions are necessary. Um, that uh, lead us uh, maybe a transition metal with the d orbitals uh, would be the particularly the good examples. Now that uh, does not mean that it's uh, guaranteed to have um, the bond dependent guitar interactions because uh, obviously we know that uh, most often we get the Heisenberg interaction which are coming from the, the exchange terms, uh, the textbook examples uh, of Heisenberg. So the question is how we generate the bond dependent spin interactions. 
uh, we'll be using um, the orbital degree of freedom, and then um, the spin-off coupling, the relativistic effect will be uh, crucial for such an interaction. So let's uh, look it up. Uh, before I do that, uh, going through the microscopic uh, derivations, I just want to um, tell you that the based on what I'm going to tell later on, we have uh, identified that the ruthenium trichloride uh, might be a best choice uh, because it is a honeycomb. So here, mid middle one is a ruthenium surrounded by this uh, chlorine. Uh, it is honeycomb molten insulator, has a strong electron electron interactions with the D5. There are five electrons in the D orbitals. And we'll be using some of orbital and spin orbit coupling uh, to show you that this is indeed a good uh, candidate. Uh, however, in the zero temperature or low temperature, in fact, that this has a magnetic ordering at low temperature. Uh, so it is not a spin liquid as it is. Uh, however, we have thinking that uh, once you apply the magnetic field and then uh, destroy the magnetic ordering, then the phase that is uh, revealed by the magnetic field might have some other phases. So this was indeed carried out uh, by uh, Matsuda's group at, uh, at uh, Japan, in Japan. Uh, and what they have seen it um, is that uh, here is their, um, here's a phase diagram. So here's a temperature, here's a magnetic field. Um, magnetic field uh, can be applied. Um, here they say parallel, so can be applied uh, either along the C-axis. C-axis is the um, perpendicular to the honeycomb plane. Um, or they can be tilted slightly away from the field. It really doesn't uh, matter. So you can apply the field like this, uh, H like that, and then project along the plane, which is their H parallel, is the projection on the in the plane. So, um, so then what they have seen is, so that's here. So I don't have to draw it here. So here's a field and they have just uh, projected on the H parallel. And you can see that uh, in this uh, particular uh, axis here, um, there is a zigzag order here. So this is like uh, some part, certain type of anti-ferromagnetic order uh, that makes the zigzag uh, ferro along one of those bond. And then anti-parallel to this zigzag is another zigzag making uh, their ferromagnetic alignment. And apply the field along these directions, uh, some directions and parallel component is parallel to this zigzag chain. And then what they see is that the, those uh, magnetic order indeed destroyed along a certain, above the like a certain magnetic field. And they have seen uh, some intermediate state here uh, where the thermal conductivity, the whole conductivity, which is the kappa xy here, uh, divided by the temperature uh, will give us uh, some value here. It's uh, quantized at a half here uh, between a certain temperature range here, which is uh, around this temperature. Below which, uh, below temperature they haven't shown yet, uh, uh, but there are other experimental groups has uh, checked this. Uh, so, and after that, this uh, they call this non-topological. So their proposal was that uh, maybe. Uh, this uh, middle state here, emphasized by red, might be a, some kind of key type spin liquid. Um, but uh, I think that this is still an under debate. Uh, I know that there are other experiments that's going on now. Um, and uh, there are uh, experiments seen that there is a kappa xy is indeed, uh, indeed finite. So they do see some finite value of the thermal hall. Uh, however, the, whether that's quantized here or not, I think we still have to wait to see if uh, that's the case. So other experimental data seems like just going through it uh, rather than half quantized. In any case, this is very narrow window of the field as well as temperature. So I think it's still uh, time to see what's going on, uh, but it's clear that the, this particular material is uh, very uh, interesting and still has to be um, further investigated. Um, so I'm going to now talk about, so why we thought that this uh, ruthenium trichloride is a good candidate. So let's see where that idea come from. Okay, so uh, I said that this is a spin half uh, of uh, bone dependent interaction, but this spin half is uh, in fact the effective spin half because we do need a strong spin of coupling to generate a, such a bone dependence. So this part, I, I think that the most audience are probably very familiar. Uh, we begin with the D orbital in the atomic, uh, atomic levels. Uh, and then uh, those are surrounded by octahedra. So there'll be a crystal field, a cubic crystal field that split the T2Z and EG. Um, so these are the cubic. And uh, 
once I have a strong spin OV coupling here, and as well as some hoping, I'll generate the band, and those bands are separate by uh, three half and a half um, of um, this effective uh, two band. Um, and I have a D5, so we'll be talking about the five electrons occupying a D, D, D orbitals, which are separated by the spin of half. So if I use a Huns, uh, Huns rule, then I'll have a up, 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 and then down, down. So at the end, uh, we have uh, just a half field J effective half end. So this is half field, and therefore we'd expect to have a metal based on the band theory. Uh, however, they are all, most of the ones that we know, either 5D of the iridiums here, uh, or the ruthenium, which is a 4D5. The ruthenium is of N equal four, and iridium is N equal five. Both of, both of them are actually an insulator. So we know that those uh, uh, band here uh, will be suffered by the electron-electron interaction, and it become a molten insulator. So that constraint or that condition is satisfied. And those are like uh, iridiums here. And that was uh, much earlier work done by uh, uh, PJ Kim and uh, Hide Dakagi and uh, uh, Taiwan Nose groups. And they noted that this is a multi insulator, but these are actually a kind of a scale lattice. So the question is can you get such a thing in the honeycomb uh, lattice? And what happens once I have a honeycomb lattice? So the uh, orbital degree of freedom is very, very important because otherwise uh, we are not going to get uh, any uh, bond dependence. So due to the strong spin orbit coupling, uh, there is a strong mixtures of the different orbital and different spins. So just wanna show you the, how the J effective half look like. Uh, J effective half orbital, if I just use the Mathematica and ask to plot it, you can generate the, some of the orbital uh, patterns here. And it's uh, made out of the e equal combination of the T2C orbitals. So here uh, it's a XY orbital with the XY, the red is, so put, is a spin up, uh, blue is a spin down, um, and gray here, meaning that it doesn't matter whether it's a spin up or down. So here is the LZ equal zero, X, you know, XY orbital with up spins. And uh, um, this is going to be a linear combination of YZ and XZ orbitals. Uh, and uh, you generate the down and down because the YZ and XZ generate the LZ equal to one. So LZ equal one and spin of half will generate the JZ equal to half state. And one can get the JZ equal minus half state. Um, you can do a time reversal operators to get the, uh, the other half. So that is the uh, orbital shape uh, and uh, composition of the spin. And that is the necessary to get the bond dependent interaction. So let's put them in the uh, now uh, in a honeycomb. So I had just one single site, and now I'm going to put them with uh, um, other nearby atoms. Uh, so here is my um, iridium or ruthenium sitting on. So here is my ruthenium here, three press, which is uh, D5 and J effective half. And here's another one that is sitting on the uh, another. Uh, D5. So let's just consider the Z bond here because once I know the Z bond of exchange process, I can get the Y bond and X bond and Y bond because uh, there is a C3 symmetry that I can apply. So once I have this bond, apply the C3, I'll be able to get the X bond and Y bond. So let's just look at the uh, Z bond and see how uh, we are going to get the uh, those uh, effective spin interactions. And uh, here the coordinate is an XYZ is based on this uh, um, tetra, this uh, octahedra group here. So this point, this is going to be x directions here and y directions here and z directions here. And uh, we call the, uh, the, this is the, our coordinate. So when you say the magnetic field is along the one, 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 that means it's coming out of the boat, which is nothing but perpendicular to the honeycomb plane. So that's the coordinate that I hope that you can become familiar with. Okay, uh, now let's put the details a little bit here and then see what is happening. So if I look at this uh, one bond here, and that means I have, uh, let's think about the super exchange process because uh, chromium is sitting in here and it has a large P orbital. So the whatever the path that we are gonna consider, the dominant one is coming through the super exchange process. So there's a one pass of super exchange and there's another pass. There is a bottom and the top and see if that will generate exchange interactions. So if you zoom in and that's the picture that uh, I can think of. So here is the uh, LZ equal to uh, 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 
one or minus one with the spin up uh, or down, it doesn't matter. So there's another one in here. And this is a Z bond, which will be created uh, by the exchange pass uh, through the P orbitals of the chlorine. And I'm going to denote now P naught, which is effective hoping going through this uh, uh, P orbital is going to be T PD pi square divided by delta PD, where delta PD is the atomic potential difference between the P and D orbitals. Okay, so let's see how that is going to do the, what the type of interaction we'll have. So hoping via the P orbital, which is super exchange, or we call, let's say we'll call it indirect uh, in exchange pass. So I have um, uh, thinking about XC orbitals here. XC orbitals either spin up or down, doesn't matter because this is a spin conserving pass. So I'll have go through this and then come back and I'm gonna denote that as a T naught. So this pass here, XZ, let's say up, going to the YZ to the up and ask myself, okay, what is the, uh, what is the conserved quantity once I do this pass? And I'll have another pass, as I said, I'll have another one which is going down here. So in that case, instead of XC, I'll have YZ orbitals put, put into the XC orbital and going through this uh, uh, effective uh, T naught, the indirect interactions. Now, as I wrote here, once I have this type of uh, inter-orbital hoping, where the hoping changes the orbital characters of XC and YZ, and you project on this EZ orbital, well, not this, this uh, J effective, the half orbital here, then you should note that in fact that the spin is conserved, but in fact that the, uh, the orbital LZ it has to change by plus minus two. So I have J equal half. So, uh, so orbital is actually changing by plus minus half because uh, this and that falling into one of those. And that actually requires the change of the Z component to be either plus or minus two. Now, as I said, the spin is conserved. Uh, therefore, that means that uh, our J effective half, uh, J effective has to change by plus minus two, but this uh, the J effective half only carries half or minus half. So that means that I don't have any Heisenberg interactions, which does not allow such a change here. So by the base on the symmetry, uh, one can tell that the uh, I don't have, another thing is I don't have XY, XY orbital, uh, super the indirect hoping, because um, XY is even under the M to a, uh, Z to a minus Z. It's a meter even under the Z, while the PZ is meter odd under the Z. So XY moving to PZ and XY, there is no hope uh, based on the symmetry of the meter. So that means that if I add these two process here, I end up with uh, basically no Heisenberg interactions. So no Heisenberg coming from either here because of the mirror symmetry, this one, basically, there is no hoping in that sense because I have to change the Z component to be a plus and minus two. But while under this uh, J effective half, I don't have that process. So this process, in fact, requires to mix up with a J equal to three half state. So I cannot just working on the half of my effective half state. I have to think about the J equal to three half state because this particular pass will take me to a higher state of the JZ equal to three half or minus three half to make this uh, uh, change to be plus minus two because JZ equal to half to a three half will allow to have a change of the two half, three half is two uh, or minus half, minus three half is minus two. So in fact, that this type of hoping is going to make the process of the J equal to half state to a three half state uh, and that I have to project back to my J equal half state. And that uh, is going to be the Y that generates the git type uh, SZ and SZ. Okay. So this git type term here is actually related to the higher, you go through the J equal to three half state and project down to the half state. So Hund's coupling between those uh, orbitals uh, is going to be the route to get uh, such an interaction. So that's why this Kitab interaction is in fact proportional to the Huns coupling. Okay, so whenever the J equal half and they cannot go back to the J equal half uh, exchange, but it has to mix with the J equal three half state on um, coming down uh, will be uh, given by the proportional to the uh, Huns coupling. And then once you work it out, then one can show that in fact, uh, this will be proportional to the minus. So it allowed to have a ferromagnetic uh, Kitab uh, interaction once I have just a dominant uh, uh, P orbital indirect exchange. 
So this was in fact done in this uh, nice paper by uh, Jack Lee and Kaluin. So I would refer to some of the details uh, in that paper. Uh, and uh, what uh, has been notified by some of us uh, is that of course, uh, there are other interactions. So those uh, super exchange going through the P orbital has generated ferromagnetic guitar interactions, but we do have other interactions in solid state, which is nothing but uh, coming through the direct hopping. So I told you that XY, XY cannot have the uh, P orbital hopping here because P is odd under the Z, uh, while these are even under the Z uh, to a minus uh, mirror symmetry, but they can directly hop into each other. Uh, that generates uh, our uh, example of the Heisenberg interaction. So there will be a Heisenberg interaction. So intra orbital uh, hoping will generate Heisenberg interactions. Um, and there is additional interaction, which is the, uh, we call the gamma interaction. So once we have uh, direct in in hoping that of course has indirect hoping, they're all mixed up. Uh, then uh, indirect hoping also would be normalized some of those and direct hoping we normalize some of the key type uh, in exchange interaction key type term will be affected by uh, those direct uh, hoping. So it's not gonna just stay with the ferromagnetic sign there because there are other terms coming from the direct uh, hoping that changes the uh, contribute to the key type interaction. So it can be an anti ferro key type interactions depending on which one is bigger compared to the other. So there is a, if we have a direct indirect, there is an interference between the two. So one can also have a direct and then uh, indirect. So these are the cross terms and they come as the uh, direct multiplied by indirect hoping. And then again, because indirect hoping uh, involves the higher j equal to three half state. So that is uh, coming down through the Huns coupling. So in other words, if I take Huns coupling goes away, uh, then those processes just vanish. So one has to always take into account spin orbit coupling to be finite. And then Huns coupling has to come together, uh, generate these three types of interactions. Okay, so generic spin model for this uh, honeycomb, uh, ideal honeycomb. So if you have uh, some distortion that we generate all the terms. So nearest neighbors of ideal honeycomb has three interactions, super, the three um, exchange interactions for a spin half. And uh, if I just look at the Z bond here, as I said, I just look at the Z bond here, uh, then there is a SZ, SZ Ising interaction, just uh, appears from KZ proportional to the Huns coupling. And then there's a gamma z, uh, in fact, that comes to the xy here and yx. So it is another bond dependent interaction because as I move to an x bond, this has to change. Both of this kz and gamma z has to change according to C3 uh, cyclic permutation here because this uh, lattice has the C3 symmetry. So then I have to change x to y, y to this. So this z become x. So that means that this will be xx interaction and then this SX, uh, uh, X become a Y. So this will be Y, uh, Z and Z and X, Z, Y. So that has to change. Uh, so only term that is uh, independent of bond is again high symbol interaction. So there are these three terms and that are generic spin model of the key type uh, candidate materials. If there is no distortion, like a trigonal distortion generate other terms. And of course there are other uh, next nearest neighbors like a J2, second nearest neighbor, third nearest neighbor that can be also possible. But let's stay with the minimal uh, generating model and ask ourselves, what are the phases then? Okay, what type of phase that we can get? Um, so this is a rather complex in fact uh, already. Um, so we had to plot it uh, using um, some phase diagram uh, and I stick with the uh, anti ferro gamma here. Uh, so gamma term is uh, ferro and anti ferro, the one that is uh, relevant for the ruthenium trichloride as well as uh, sodium 2 iridium O3 or lithium 2 iridium O3, those are also honeycomb iridate. They all seem to have a finite gamma, which are anti ferro magnet. So I just plot the anti ferro gamma. So here we are just staying with the positive uh, anti ferro gamma and uh, uh, parameterize this phase diagram using our two angles. Uh, so gamma is uh, cosine of the zeta and zeta is the one that is going to be uh, around here is going to be a zero. So here in the middle is the gamma only model. As I move away uh, and then go uh, around to the boundary here, gamma goes to zero. 
Uh, so that means the theta is changing from zero to a pi by two here. As it goes to pi by two, then uh, I end up with only Kitaev and Heisenberg model. So this boundary is going to be a Kitaev or Heisenberg model. As I get it into the center, gamma is increasing and it is antiferral. So now phi is uh, controlling between the J and K, uh, Kitaev and Heisenberg interaction. And phi is equal to zero is a positive antiferro Heisenberg. So it's an antiferro magnet. Most of the space space is in fact antiferro magnet. And again, ferro magnet uh, Heisenberg uh, will give you ferro magnet. It's a, it's a honeycomb lattice. So they actually occupy the most of the space. What's interesting is that the, if you look at the Kitaev, uh, here's a Kitaev, um, uh, antiferro Kitaev and ferro Kitaev, uh, it just occupies extremely tiny phase space. So Kitaev's been like living here, living there. Uh, as soon as we have a small Heisenberg or small gamma interactions, it just uh, try to um, order. What's interesting here is that uh, nearby here, uh, pure gamma model, uh, we were not able to identify what type of magnetic order we have. It's, uh, it's very, very frustrated. And uh, we just speculate they might be a spiral order, uh, but now there is a more, um, evidence that uh, it might be something else in commensurate, it might be some gapless spin liquid. So there are some uh, debate going on. Other phases like a zigzag is going to be this one here. So ruthenium chloride is going to have a zigzag order, either can be somewhere here or can be somewhere here. Both of these are zigzag ordered. Uh, if you have a small distortion, one can also generate a small zigzag order here. So, uh, and then there's a little bit of stripey orders here, which are like a, a ferro within the stripey pattern like this. And then we call 120, which look like a vortex state. So this triangle is making 120, and there's another triangle making 120. So it's going to be something like a vortex state. And there's a, a clear um, boundary between 120 and antiferro magnet and so on. So that's the uh, phase diagram of the, um, the generic uh, spin model and uh, other, most of the uh, compound uh, which has been proposed uh, to be a Kitaev uh, candidate, in fact, is sitting somewhere here, like uh, antiferro gammas and then ferro Kitaev. And then there are small Heisenberg interactions uh, and there are some other interactions uh, such as the uh, third nearest neighbors and so on. So it is nearby the Kitaev spin liquid, um, but it is not quite there. So that's, uh, uh, that's the um, current stage. So what we were uh, thinking about is that, okay, we know that dominant interaction is the ferromagnetic Kitaev and antiferrogammas. Both are frustrated. Kitaev is like Ising frustrated. Sight of uh, spin doesn't know what to do because of those three different Ising interactions. Gamma is even more frustrated because it's more like a Yuan type of the uh, ordering of the, the frustrations. It has X, Y, and then if I rotate into the Y component of the bond, it will have X, Z, and Z, X. So it is uh, completely, both of them are completely frustrated. So what we are thinking is that, uh, and we know from the many studies that dominant interaction is the Kitai and gamma, both are frustrated. Mm -hmm. However, if you add a small interaction such as uh, Heisenberg or there are trigonal distortion allowed terms, so-called gamma primes, uh, or J3's uh, third nearest neighbor Heisenberg interactions, they will generate the magnetic orders. So the idea was that, okay, if we have a magnetic field which destroyed this magnetic ordering, just like experiment that was suggested, that uh, we will be revealing the phase um, that is set by uh, Kitaev and gamma interactions. So then what's the, the question is that from a theorist point of view was that what are the phases of Kitaev and gamma model with without the field? So the magnetic field, the Zeman field, which coupled the spin as the H dot and S, rather than just the, type, the, the time reversal symmetry breaking term, which was uh, written as a perturbatively, we'll just add the magnetic field and see what happens. Um, and this is uh, not an easy problem actually recognized. Um, so there has been a, a lots of studies um, that uh, try to understand what is the phase diagram of this two simple term uh, we know the pure Kitaev model here will give us Kitaev spin liquid. Uh, if you add a magnetic field, uh, which is a Zeman interaction, this is no longer exactly solvable. 
And we still have some question mark on that. We don't quite know what is the actual face on the line, the, uh, even pure guitar plus the field. That's one question. Uh, are we going to simply polarize the face or do we have some intermediate phase which are different from guitar spinnaker and different from polarized classical state? Uh, and then one can also ask you, what is the gamma here? And here is the <laughs> controversial problem. So pure gamma model itself is uh, have a lots of list already and they all uh, differ between slightly or very differ <laughs> between each other. So there has been a suggestion that there's a non-magnetic state from the ED of the small cluster uh, from a DMLG with the long strips, uh, IDMLG, DMLG. Uh, there has been a variation of Monte Carlo that suggests that this has to have a zigzag magnetic order. Uh, you note that there was a very close to the zigzag magnetic order. So it might be just the zigzag magnetic order. Uh, it has to have a non-magnetic state. Uh, these people here, uh, I, we don't know if it is a spin liquid or not, but it is disordered state. That does spontaneously break the C3 symmetry and they call the pneumatic uh, paramagnet. Uh, and there is also DMLG studies that suggest that this has to be a capless uh, spin liquid. Classical spin, uh, in fact, has, has been also studied uh, by uh, uh, this uh, group of the people, Natasha Perkins et al. And they have found that it's called classical spin liquid. Uh, the degeneracy is related to those uh, plaquettes uh, that I have told you earlier and comes with a two to the n over two where n is the number of site. So it has a huge degeneracy in this uh, uh, gamma model, which are classical spin. So the question is, okay, what happens in the quantum spin? And these are the controversial uh, so far that I have found. Um, so now if you add a field, then of course, uh, this is going to be a particularly a difficult problem. So then I uh, was thinking maybe one can learn something by looking at a small ladder uh, instead of uh, looking at 2D system. So this is apparently geometrically very, uh, very limited. So I don't think we are claiming anything that uh, should happen in 2D, uh, but uh, at least it'll give us some insight to uh, where we might have a disordered or a quantum spin liquid. Because if you have a magnetic order in this uh, small ladder geometry, I don't think we'll get uh, any disordered state in the 2D limit. So we can exclude some of the phase space and then focus on the phase space that likely have the spin liquid. So we decide to look at the Kitaev and gamma and then apply the field, which is this gem and term here. And H was, uh, one can tilt it. So here is the one, one, one. I told you that's the C axis. Uh, and then one, one, two bar is the so-called A axis. And that's the direction of the magnetic ordering, by the way. So it's exact orderings are going to be aligned along the A axis and tilted slightly away from the, somewhere between the AC plane, this AC plane. So, and we were focusing on the one, one, one along the C axis and see what happens. So we set the two, uh, um, so there's a two uh, interaction with the magnetic field and parameterize the K to be cos phi and gamma to be a sine phi. And then we use the uh, DMLG and IDMLG and see what happens numerically. So we have two parameters, basically the ratio between this uh, uh, gamma over K and then this uh, field. And then we were thinking about, okay, what's gonna happen? Then we have found that uh, there are 15 different phases. So it's a very, very rich. We were like, okay, what should we do this? This is uh, incredibly rich. And I'm not gonna uh, bother you to uh, look at all of them. So let me focus on the ones that are disordered and most likely have a chance to give us uh, this uh, long sought quantum spin linkage in the 2D limit. So here is the uh, positive uh, git type uh, limits here. Uh, these are, by the way, the uh, single, so-called single copy entanglement uh, susceptibility. So it, it's a, some uh, way to check it out the uh, phase diagrams. Uh, it's a some susceptibility. Um, and uh, so here is going to be a git type phase. So ladder has a git type phase. It's a gap, in, in, unlike the 2D git type spin like So it has a gap to spin gap the uh, uh, features. Uh, so here is going to be a some disorder state that we know. And then here's a pure gamma limit. We see very large range of the uh, 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 some disorder state here. Here's a field reaction. So it apparently extended quite a lot here, similar to a antiferro type. Antiferro gamma has a huge uh, disorder the phase. And then here's a ferro type and it extended along some very large range here which is again disordered. 
uh, feral gamma limits is order state. So let's now focus on some few places. Uh, um, so just want to show you that it's a rich phase diagrams, probably due to strong uh, frustrations. Uh, so I'm going to focus on just uh, two different limits. Uh, as I said, uh, near the NP ferrogamma gamma region, there are three different disorder state. So among all these 15, there are six of them. And I'll tell you one of which one of those will be likely have some possibility of quantum spin again. So near the NP ferrogamma gamma region, which is here, so here is a field, and here is this uh, uh, changing uh, ratio of the gamma and the guitar F. Here is the, so this one is, a, by the way, this uh, wrong entanglement. So it's very entangled state, by the way. It's more entangled than Gitaev. So here's an anti gamma reason. We have a Gitaev uh, reason, which is this FK, the ferromagnetic Gitaev. And we know that in 2D limit, this is a Gitaev spin linkage. We have uh, another one, which is called wrong singlet. This is the part here. So this is the uh, just the wrong singlet in a ladder. That means that I know that uh, this mapping into the anti ferromagnetic Heisenbaum model. So once I put it into the 2D limit, this is going to have anti ferromagnetic order, despite that it has, in fact, more than two sites. But uh, Heisenbaum model will select uh, this anti ferromagnetic order. So the best place is actually uh, this part here. So ferro type and anti ferro gamma both has a disorder state. And this gamma disordered phase is going to be most likely, we think it's a possibly a quantum spin liquid in the 2D. So that's one point. And the other one is near the antiferro uh, Kitaev resin. So both antiferro is most frustrated, uh, as you know from Heisenberg model. Even Heisenberg model, we know the antiferro Heisenberg is not a classical state, while ferromagnetic Heisenberg is just a direct product of uh, a classical state. So antiferro Kitaev also has this three different state here. So one is the antiferro Kitaev limit, which become a Kitaev spin liquid, we know that. And also, it's much more extended in a field. They survive much better uh, in this uh, wide range. And then above which the anti uh phase, we have this uh, so-called staggered chirality phase. So this has no magnetic order. Now, all of these ones has incommensurate order. So one can sort of uh, ignore it at this point. So there's this uh, staggered chirality, no magnetic order, but there is a scalar chirality, which I define in here. Uh, which has this uh, nice pattern of the staggered chirality. What's amazing in this space is that uh, despite that we have magnetic field, this staggered chirality has the uh, equal amplitude. So it's a press minus minus press in such a way, if I take the average values of the chirality, it is actually a zero. So there is no magnetic flux that's threading uh, this uh, little triangle in any case. It's just that uh, once the average, it's everywhere zero. And that's what you call staggered chirality. And there's a uniform chirality here, a little, little area which appears only under the field um, that has the uh, different uh, the chiral patterns. It has uh, uh, overall has a finite chirality with the finite. So these are the three different phase that's uh, most likely have some interesting features going on. So if one can tune anti type and going in a field, there'll be another possible spin liquid even in the 2D. And that might be even chiral spin liquid that people have been looking for so long ago. Okay, so that's uh, that's just want to show you the Kitaev uh, gamma model in field. There are some possible spin liquid, and it's a very high uh, uh, rich phase diagrams. Uh, I'll probably because given the time that I know that I have <laughs> exceeded it, uh, I'll just have a higher spin model. Uh, but uh, I think I should uh, probably stop and. Uh, take uh, questions um, or should I? Or, I mean, I would say that you can have, let's say five, then more minutes if oh, you okay. want. If you... Excellent. Yeah. It'll, yeah, it'll take just five minutes because, yeah. or even less, uh, I'll just go through the higher spin models. Uh, so spin S is, uh, has been also another interest. Uh, people have been looking at, okay, what happened if I had a Kitaev interactions? which are not a spin half, but it's a spin one or a spin three half, something arbitrarily S. Yes. Um, that has been solved, has been considered the first time by the uh, Shankar Raos and Bhaskar Raos. And they have found that there is an ultra short uh, range correlation. So it has something very interesting. Uh, but then uh, we were thinking about how one can get the bone dependent traction for a spin bigger than a half, because we know that we have used the strong spin of coupling to get uh, such a bond dependent interaction, orbitals uh, elongate a certain way that allow to have a bond dependence. 
uh, but then I have to couple through that the orbitals, I uh, have to couple through the uh, spin uh, to get uh, such uh, interactions. Um, but on the other hand, higher spin meaning that I need a strong Hunt's coupling. Because so here's one example, D8. Uh, I, if I have uh, eight uh, electrons, all occupy T2Z, I have a two electron in the EZ. Using a Hunt's coupling, I'll generate the spin one state. So crystal field is bigger uh, in just like a spin half. But now my Hunt's coupling is way bigger than the spin orbit coupling. It's not the other way around. So there is no mixtures of different spins. And this EZ is uh, two field uh, orbital. So there is no uh, orbital is not active there. So there is no mixtures and spin. So uh, this means that there has to be somewhere else that uh, we have to couple them. So we were thinking, well, maybe one can get it from the heavy anions. Uh, so if I have a heavy ligand, which has a strong spin orbit coupling, lambda the p, so it's uh, basically coming from a p orbital spin orbit coupling. Uh, then uh, one can use the spin orbit coupling of p orbitals because we have to go through these p orbitals to get the exchange patterns, especially from uh, indirect part. Uh, and then use the Hunt's coupling to generate the large spin. And that's how we can get the uh, large spin of the, the, sometimes something like a kit type. Term. So we've done the calculation. I'm not going to bother you with the, all the details. Well, we found that the indirect ones uh, has a kit type interaction. It's actually quite big. Uh, it's uh, twice bigger with the opposite sign with the uh, uh, indirect uh, Heisenberg interaction. And direct ones only give the Heisenberg interactions. And the gamma was actually a zero. So it's very simple. In fact, we end up with Gitaev Heisenberg interaction. And Gitaev was uh, antiferromagnetic in this case for a D8 the spin one case. Uh, and uh, here the total Heisenberg is a sum of uh, indirect and the direct, and they come with opposite sign. So in fact, the Heisenberg term can be small depending on the ratio between the, these two. So then we were thinking, okay, what about the chromium triiodide? People have studied this uh, and uh, even our organizer has done this some nice work. So this is a ferromagnetic insulator with a spin three half honeycomb. And uh, do we have a type interaction? Do we have a bond dependent interactions? Um, and if so, then how big they are and how they are related to the ferromagnetic, uh, ferromagnetic uh, magnetic ordering. So, um, we look it up and uh, we said, okay, we still now have the T2Z, uh, which is uh, again up, up, up. Uh, so it's a spin three half, EZ is empty. Uh, so it's important that uh, we use EZ to go through the, um, the exchange pass. And nearest neighbor model without any distortion, it's an ideal case. Um, again, back to the JK gamma, because these are based on the symmetry. So once you have a symmetry, allow the Hamiltonian is this, that's it. And then there will be, of course, other terms once you have a small distortion. So gamma is zero, almost zero. So that's very, very tiny in the, uh, without the distortion. So now if I add a small trigonal distortion, which is indeed the case in the actual system, all has this RT bar, uh, which is a small trigonal distortion that allowed to have uh, at least two different terms. Uh, one is uh, the so-called gamma prime, which is another bond dependent interaction. And then there is a single ion on isotropy because it's uh, spin bigger than one half. So that appears. And so single ion on ice gamma gamma primes are coming from spin orbit coupling and the distortion. So that's the minimal uh, nearest neighbor models. And uh, that uh, is uh, going to generate the quite a, uh, I mean, it's rich, but at the end, at, at the same time, um, so it's like a difficult problem because uh, we have uh, no dominant interaction in this case, except the Heisenberg most likely. So I have made a table here that just to give an idea how that changes as you move from half to one and three half. Uh, Heisenberg, in fact, uh, once, and these, all of these are in unit of uh, T naught square divided by U, which is this uh, effective, effective hoping through the uh, P orbitals or uh, ligand, uh, which is the always uh, most likely the dominant term because it's always bigger than the direct hoping. Um, in unit of this, uh, you can see that the uh, gamma is uh, kind of ignored if you go to beyond the half. But uh, in the case of um, Heisenberg terms, it's still order one in the three half, so dominate. At least the ratio between the spin orbit coupling and the ligand divided by this atomic potential. Mm -hmm. So it moves like all squares. So in fact, it's rather, um, mm -hmm. it, this one is order one. As I get the bigger and bigger spin, uh, I got a bigger Heisenberg interactions. 
unless there's a, some way they can cancel out because there's an indirect part and the direct part, they comes with a different signs. So there's a fine tuning that one can generate this to be small, but otherwise it's a dominant. And then key type interaction comes as the uh, outskirt, so it's just small. So I would say that uh, this nearest neighbor model, in fact, uh, can be written in this uh, JK gamma gamma prime with a single ion on isotropy. But on the other hand, one can also write this Hamiltonian in a different uh, coordinate. Instead of using X, Y, Z of this uh, octahedra coordinate, one can also use the ABC where C is the one, one, one uh, perpendicular to the plane and A and B are in the plane. And if you use that coordinate and then uh, have done some ab initial calculation, in fact, the gamma and gamma primes are very close and then Kitai become very small, then it, this mapping into the XXZ with a single ion on isotropy model. So this is, uh, in fact, go back to the, uh, was this, uh, this uh, paper that was uh, organized has also done a nice work. Um, so I just want to end that the, uh, these are still beginning of, um, uh, looking into the correlations or correlated effect together with the spin of recoupling in this uh, huge van der Waals materials. Uh, we have uh, all this transition metal that can uh, mix with uh, all that ligand, heavy or light, um, or those uh, will generate this uh, bond dependent interactions, which give us a rich physics uh, and also possibility of the uh, spin liquid. And as I said, that there are edge sharing lattice with high symmetry and strong spin of couplings. There are many, many examples. So we are still look forward to see more and more uh, exotic and novel physics uh, coming out of this uh, solid state uh, materials. And I just also want to say that there are other proposals. Uh, there are D7 cobalt oxide that has some spin liquid and F electrons that people are looking into it. So I think how. Uh, uh, this is still, again, uh, very, very uh, beginning of the, some discoveries. Uh, hopefully, that we'll have more discoveries coming in soon. Um, so with that, uh, I will stop here. And uh, thank you for your attention. Yeah, thanks a lot, Heian, for this wonderful talk and for telling us about this uh, really inspiring physics of quantum spin liquids. Uh, so now we have some time for questions. So if you have any question, you can either uh, raise your hand or you can write it in the chat. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so there's one question by Abdu. Abdu, please go ahead. Okay, so a question from uh, experimentalists. So as, <laughs> as far as I could understand uh, in the last part, so if you consider the mixing between pi and the orbital, uh, all we know that uh, pi orbital do not really make a spin to coherence as much as D. So I was thinking, uh, is there any possibility to also uh, go to superconducting phase instead of just uh, uh, all phases like spin liquid? Oh, yeah. So very good question. Um, so we haven't considered uh, superconducting phase uh, yet uh, um, because uh, this, we were it's not because it's, it's because it's very interesting, of course, but it's very difficult because uh, this is, a, a, in a sense, it's a half field, like uh, we are dealing with like a multi insulator. So to get a superconducting phase, uh, we'll probably have to dope it. Um, and uh, if one go back to the historical development of this uh, is uh, back to the strontium-2 iridium-04, and that has the same structure as a high tissue cuprate. And uh, people were trying to dope it uh, with uh, and make a superconductor, uh, but uh, haven't succeeded yet. Um, so then people are trying to understand what is the magnetism, uh, and that's the magnetism is not that trivial because it has some cantilever ferromagnetic moment, and that's where the spin orbit coupling comes in, and then start to thinking about it. So yes, uh, people are interested in doping the sample and see if uh, there is a superconductivity comes in, I would say if one is able to dope it, uh, maybe that's the case. And then what is the, uh, the underlying pairing of the superconductor will be another big question uh, that uh, we don't know yet. But I think that from an experimental point of view, it's actually quite difficult to dope the sample of the ruthenium trichloride, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I think that one has to either electron dope or hold dope uh, without introducing too much disorder, maybe 
uh, not, not not like a quantum phase transition, like right? not not with a possibility. Okay, it's doping is one thing, but mm -hmm. uh, like magnetic field or something like that. That's yeah, also but, mm -hmm. but magnetic field won't be happy with a superconductor unless it's a spin triplets uh, like. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think it has uh, seen it. Uh, and uh, it's uh, one of the next steps that people have been thinking about it. And I know that lots of people are working on it, like are trying to uh, see if there is a superconductivity in this, uh, in this one. Because once you have a superconductor, it will be very uh, exotic one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so I do not see other questions in the chat. So perhaps I can ask one question on, on my side. So, so you were showing us that one can have, let's say, kitev interaction both for spin one half and spin one. And uh, I mean, of course, one, one question is, uh, would it be more likely to have a quantum spin liquid state for spin one half or for spin one? In the sense uh, of, let's say, how big would be the, the phase space in the phase diagram? You're right. So that's a very good question because uh, spin one case, uh, so, um, in fact, spin half and spin one is very, very different. So jumping into the answer to your question, I think it's most likely a spin half will have a more quantum spin liquid like. Um, the reason for that is uh, spin one case, Kitaev uh, model. Um, so I don't think that has been solved yet. Uh, maybe somebody who is watching this uh, may be able to correct me. Uh, but uh, if I look at um, small systems, like uh, for example, um, one can look at like 1D chain of the Kitaev uh, uh, spin one model. And we know that the uh, ground state is uh, in fact, in that case actually is unique uh, with a big gap uh, to excited state uh, that has so-called G2 uh, variable as well. Uh, but those C2 are local actually. So at least the ground state is concerned. I think that is less likely a spin liquid. And uh, therefore, oh, of course, I, I don't mean that it's a magnetically ordered though. It's a disordered state, but uh, it's not clear uh, if uh, that will become a spin liquid in the 2D limits. So. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah, there's a question from Max. So Max, please go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> uh, hello, uh, thank you very much for this nice um, presentation. Uh, just a um, question. So this uh, PD um, states that participate uh, in the exchange, do they disperse somehow or not? Or they are completely localized state? And will you see some uh, orbital, let's say texture in the bands? if they disperse somehow. Uh, which state? What is the PD? So this uh, hybridized PD state. So if you have the exchange between the D states, between the D electrons, we are uh, hoping, yeah, we are, which involves P states of uh -huh. the ligands. So then you have a sort of PD hybridized states. Okay, so D electron hybridized with uh... Yeah, because if you if you have this hoping, you have a sort of hybridization between the states, no? Yes. So will, will you see some dispersion of these states or they will be completely uh, like flat bands, let's say? Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. So yes, uh, there, there are hybridizations, yes. Uh, so the D electrons will hybridize with the uh, P orbitals. That's what you're trying to. Yeah. Say. Yes, so there is a uh, P orbitals and the uh, band is actually dispersing. Uh, that is, um, uh, so if I just do a initial calculation, mm -hmm. uh, then what happened is that the, uh, this D electrons uh, will hybridize with strongly with the P orbitals and you will see the J equal half state which are sitting uh, at the firm level and there are two sub lattice. So you see some two band, which is, uh, in fact, it's uh, sticking together. It just sticks, there's this uh, stick band appears. And then uh, without the interactions, then you will have half field uh, J, the half state, which are dispersing. And orbitals are also mixed because of the uh, spin-off coupling. 
And now if, if they are dispersed, uh, do you see, uh, let's say some um, texture, uh, will be any difference between these bands in three different orientations? So you have like three, three fold symmetry for these bands. Yes. yes. Will, will you see some difference between these bands? I, yes. So, so in the initial, it does have this metallic state. And then if you add up interactions, it'll become an insulator. But despite that it's an insulator, I would think that the this uh, excited state, the band will know that there was a character of the spin and orbital. And through the C3, you will see a texture of the orbital composition. And up to which temperature we can see this texture model? <laughs> um, so in can, this can I do, let's say, uh, 16 Kelvin, 20 Kelvin RPS experiment and see it, or it will be completely washed out with temperature excitation? So 16 Kelvin, six, okay, so if you do an RPS on the 16 Kelvin, I think you will still see the textures because the guitar interaction is uh, roughly about uh, 70 to 80 Kelvin. That's how we, as we think that's the case uh, from other neutrons and many other people have done it. So 16 Kelvin uh, of the occupied state, I would think that uh, you will have some still uh, textures. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, there's uh, another question in the chat. Uh, which is a great talk question. The calculation for the 1D KTF plus gamma that you have shown, is it open boundary conditions? If so, are there H states? Um, yeah, that's uh, another good question. So the one that we have done it, uh, we have uh, both uh, periodic boundary condition and uh, open boundary condition. So in the case of KTF and uh, antiferro gamma case, um, there is a boundary state but that depends on how you cut it. So the boundary state can be either two, and they are actually a zero energy state. So there uh, can be two or four, uh, and that depends on the, in this uh, particular geometry that we had, because we have a ladder, so one can cut it uh, like this, for example, or cut it like that, or cut it uh, something like this. That depends on the uh, how we use the open boundary condition. The edge state do appears, and number of the state differ depending on the boundary conditions. So it has a, some entanglement to associate with it. But this is again back to the one D ladder. Uh, so this uh, entanglement will be probably show ranged, I think. But in two D limits, of course, it can be something very interesting. And there are debate okay <laughs> under that uh, problem. All right, great. So then uh, I would propose that we slowly stop the official part of the colloquium. So first of all, uh, thanks a lot, Heian, for this wonderful talk and for telling us about this uh, really inspiring physics of quantum spin liquids. Uh, thank you everybody for coming today to the colloquium. It was wonderful to have you here and uh, we hope to see you in two weeks from now. <laughs>